We think of ABA, and we always think of it as having to do with autism. We know that it wasn't invented for autism, but uh, how are you applying ABA to the idea of voting? First of all, I'm here telling people that if, if you're a behavior analyst, mm -hmm. you obviously have techniques and strategies that work to change people's behavior. And those strategies can work with individuals with autism, uh, individuals with, um, you know, I've seen it in sports, I've seen it in a variety of places. It also works, I know it's kind of a secret, but it also works, you know, in the political realm, although not too many people are doing it. So if you want to influence politicians' behavior, you know, why not use the strategies, you know? So what, what can we be doing to do that? What do you suggest? Interact with, with your legislator. Mm -hmm. You know, so the first thing, you, you register to vote. Second, find out who represents you, whether it's in Congress or, or the state level. Uh, third, before you interact with them, you ought to find out, you know, how do they like to be contacted? Is a phone call best? Is an email? Is a letter? And, and, and so what you're trying to do is, is in essence, um, from a behavioral perspective, you know, provide and, and create the, the right situation for um, getting a response and then reinforcing that response. Makes sense. So it's, it's, it's no different than what you know, what, what parents do with, the, with their kids. Okay. Um, only now you're dealing with, with, with legislators and legislative staff. Uh, I mean, I, I can on a given day get 200 or 250 emails. Right. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do, I wanna see who sent the email. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and I wanna see if you're a constituent of mine. Mm -hmm. if, if you're from someone else's district, then I will send you on to that, to that legislator because that's who you should be interacting with. Right. Uh, and the reality is I've gotta represent 40,000 people and I can't respond to 140,000 people. Right. So uh, it's important when you interact to identify yourself, to make sure that you, you're calling the right person. Uh -huh. um, and when you do that, w what our office does, I mean, I, I, I may be the, um, the unusual person. I read all my emails, you know, uh, and respond to them. Uh, so I want to see, A, you, are you my constituent? Uh -huh. And what you're also trying to do is establish a relationship. So it's, it's good to know what your interests and what, what your concerns are. Uh, also what your expertise is. So when something comes up, for example, dealing with, with autism, mm -hmm. then I may call those parents mm -hmm. who I know who have children who are on the spectrum, mm -hmm. saying, okay, what do you think about this particular law uh, that's being proposed? Or does this regulation make sense to you? Uh, so you're, you're trying to initially establish credibility. I, I think that everybody should be responded to because the reality is I don't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, whether you're liberal or a member of the Tea Party, you know, if you live in the second Hampshire district of Massachusetts, you're stuck with me. Yeah. I'm representing you. Uh, so you, you may be as far, you know, 180 degrees away from me on the political spectrum, mm -hmm. but if you don't speak to me or, or let me know what your issues and concerns are, then I can't represent you. Right. And, and, and I think sometimes, particularly the way things have been operating in Washington on such a partisan level, mm -hmm. you know, people just diminish uh, the value of something someone has to offer because they're the, the opposite party. And I don't think it should be that way. Getting back to, because I love this idea of interacting with our different representatives in, the, in this way and, and having it all make sense. Um, anything else that you can tell us to do to help, help to get them to behave in the way we want them to behave and vote the way we want them to vote? Well, I think part of it also is, you know, and, and this, this is probably the most difficult piece. Most people are, are just scared. It's like, you know, I, I can't call my congressman. I, I, I can't call my state legislator. You know, I, I'm so nervous. I don't, I don't you know, take a breath, realize that on, on the issue that you're concerned about, let's say an autism issue, you are the expert. Yeah. They're not. And so what you need to do is, is take that breath, but also, you know, I don't want to say dumb it down, but to some degree you have to. Okay. So, so no jargon. You really don't want to talk about ABA. You don't want to talk about, you know, specific you know, uh, techniques or strategies, because sometimes you have individuals who don't know the difference between behavior analysis and psychotherapy. Right. Okay, so, so you need to make sure they understand. Uh, I think the other thing is to try to do it not in a theoretical or a philosophical or ideological level, but get it down, just get down and dirty with, 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 with the details. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've, I've often tell people, you know, if you want to advocate and lobby for something, you know, take a, bring a picture of your kid. You know, get it down to this. We're not talking about numbers here in a spreadsheet for budget items or issues. We're talking about real people. Mm -hmm. This is my son. This is my daughter. These are her needs. This isn't what's, what's happening or this is what's happening and, and shouldn't. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be, 
you know, a lot of data from, a, you know, 100 people or 150, just those one or two that, that really could make the difference.